this is wonderful, this wonderful group we have here. And it's amazing. It's not only my California friends, but we have friends now joining us from, from Indonesia. And this morning we were talking to two of our Indonesian friends, um, Safarendi and Amira, and they're putting these children's books into the Indonesian language. And I couldn't believe they had been present and seen the program on Wudu. And I just wanted to say something. We did send out to all of you a, a kind of a chart for your, to, to put up at the place where you do Wudu. But I wanted to say to the parents that when um, I did the children's book, I didn't put all of the prayers that you could say at the various stages of Wudu because I thought it was too much for the young people. But if the parents would please go and read the adult book and do their own list. I mean, just a quick, time, a quick, quick one minute review for everybody, some of you who might have missed it. I'm just gonna tell you that one story about Wudu, which will help everybody, that once upon a time, there was a scholar and he was very proud and he knew everything and he had long robes. And then one day, an old man came to knock on his door and said, what is Wudu? I wanna know what is Wudu? And the scholar said, how can you old man be in this village your whole life? You're a Muslim and you don't know how to do wudu, go away. But the old man insisted. So the scholar said, come in. And he turned on the water and he did the wudu. And he said, now old man, you do wudu the exact way I did it. And you know what happened? The old man got it all wrong. He did everything backwards. And, and, the, and the scholar said, get out, out. So the old man left with his cane walking away and the scholar sent his, as you remember, the scholar sent his assistant to see what was going on. And the assistant came back and said, oh scholar, I am so sorry to tell you this, but that old man you chased away and that you were mean to, he's like the most revered and honored wise elder in our town. Everyone goes to him for help with their heart. So the scholar thought, oh no. So he put on his robe and he walked down the street and he went to the old man who was sitting there and, and the scholar got down on his knees and he put his hands and head low and he said, oh, oh, elder, please tell me what is wudu? And the scholar said, what you all have been doing when you wash your hands, you don't just wash them thinking nothing, you think, Yani, Allah, forgive me for things I've been doing. Guide me to do the right thing. Washing the mouth. Oh, I've said some not very nice things. Please inspire me to say beautiful, kind things. And then may what I smell remind me of heaven. May my face shine with your light. May you protect me. You know, and my ears, my ears. Let, let, me, let me only listen to good things. Not, don't let me listen to naughty things. And so then of course your feet, you know, they have to take you in the right direction. So it's a good idea to, to make your own chart, but the parents should make their own chart and put in some of the things that older people might like to have. So anyway, what um, I just thought I'd do that review with you and suggest. So today we're going to do, or now we're gonna do share screen. Your screen. And today we are going to do um, the mysteries of prayer, and it's a lot. And I'm going to go quickly, and I can't cover everything. But just tonight is some highlights because I feel we are all praying every day, and it's good to have some idea. You can go to your books. You can the workbooks are wonderful. That the activities are fun, and you can get all this together. But I just want for parents and children to have a bit of a, some of the highlights for you to, to know about. It might be a little boring for the children, but for goodness sakes, you're, some of you are seven, you're starting, you at least see prayer all the time. So it's a very good idea to have some more information about it. So let me put on my glasses. I've taken notes, so I didn't get this wrong, right? But what Ghazali teaches us about prayer, everyone, also applies to every moment of our life because prayer has to be filled with like being having reverence and good intentions and humility and understanding and hope right and shame and our hearts should be sincere this is what these are some of the elements of prayer that are very important 
And when you get your book of prayer, I want you to, I want you to read, oops, I want you to read carefully Hamza Yusuf's introduction on prayer for children. It's absolutely fabulous. I thought tonight what I would do is just read that to you, but then, then there was all the rest. So you can read that on your own, right? And so then um, I thought we'd, we'd start with, just a minute, I keep messing up here. So I don't know whether you all know this. Do you all know who taught the prophet peace and blessings be upon him to pray and to um, do what you do? Who knows? Angel Jibreel. Absolutely, the angel Jibreel. And here, right here, he's just kicked the stone and some beautiful water is coming out. So he taught him to pray and look at that beautiful water from the Zemzem, which is still going today. And you know what? Then the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he went and taught his wife, Khadija, how to pray, right? And Oh, but you remember also, he went on the mirage up through the seven heavens, and it was there that he learned, and you all will know the story, how instead of having to do 50 prayers a day, which Allah would have loved, we only have to do five. But then the third person to learn how to pray in the Islamic world was a 10-year-old boy, and his name was Ali. Ibn Abi Talib. He was a cousin, right? And so he was, he, he learned to pray. He was the third person. You're going to hear more about him later, right? So now, first story. All right, children, ask yourself could you just be walking down the street and just open the door to the palace of the king or the president and go in and tell him what your needs are? Could you just go in and say, I want you to help me with my needs? Do you think they would let you do that? Do you think so? No, 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 no. They wouldn't. No. They wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't. No. But who can you go to directly with your needs that's waiting for you all the time to hear? Allah, Allah, no. Allah. Allah, you've got it exactly right. Allah, he's, he, yeah. Allah. he wants you to speak directly to him. And he's always available. Allah. Exactly. And and how do you how do you speak to him? You use he's, ava he's available to everything you need. That's and he's never too busy. I love it that you just said that. That's so beautiful that you understand that exactly. You know? And so he's waiting for us and he wants to speak with us. And that's why we need to, to know how to pray, because pray is prayer is the door. Now uh, also. Um, another thing, this is, uh, this, if you go out into the wilderness, out into the parks, out into, and you call the Adan, all the angels want to come and pray with you. Look at that. If you go out and the prayers are like, like there's a stream in front of your door and water, the, the old river is going by five times a day that you can purify and we'll do is just the same thing but it's washing your heart at the same time, you see? And so you have to know that your prayers, everybody are like a key to heaven. And you have to be, you have to do them on time and you have to be very careful with your wudu. And you wanna hear a story about why you have to be careful with your prayers, listen to this. All right, uh, when you say do a perfect, beautiful prayer and your wudu is good, that prayer rises up in white glowiness and it says, may Allah protect me um, uh, just as you have protected me. In other words, when you do your prayer correctly, you've protected it from being hurt. And so it rises up and it spe speaks to Allah. And so it's important to protect your prayers. And you know what happens if you don't do your prayers right? You know what's gonna happen? The prayers are going to be sad. Imam al-Ghazali said they're sad. And they come to you and they say, why did you neglect us? We are sad. Why did you steal parts of us away? So we were left not complete and not whole. How could you steal a part of your prayer away? Maybe you didn't do part of it. Maybe you rushed through part of it. So it got left out and it wasn't whole. And the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the worst people, the worst people steal prayer and prayer is precious. 
you have to keep it safe so nothing can hurt it. Don't you all want to take good care of your prayers? You don't want them to be sad, do you? No. So Allah gives us very special, a very special and complete way to pray. And so if he's teaching us all of this, we wouldn't want to do a shabby, messy prayer, would we? No. So we're going to find out how to make our prayers completely complete. We don't want our prayers to be sad, right? Now, I don't know whether you know this. Do you all sometimes pray with your family or in a group? Yes, you do. Oh, I'm Sarah, I'm so glad you do that because listen to this. I do. If you pray in a group with more than just I yourself, the prayer is 27 times better. And there's a, and wait till you hear this story. Once upon a time, at the time of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, a man um, missed the, the prayer in a group and he stayed home. He didn't make it to the mosque. <gasps> and everybody went to him and they said, we are so sad for you. We've come to tell you we're sad for your great loss because it, it was so terrible not to have play, prayed in a group. In the early days of Islam, if someone uh, was late for a prayer for three days, everyone went and they comforted them and they said they were sad for them. And if they, and if they missed, and if for seven days they missed coming to pray in a group, everyone would go to their home and cry and be so sad for them. That's how important it is, you know? That's important to know that, isn't it? And you know, this is, you know, this position when you pray called sujood. Um, there's a hadith that Allah loves those who, who love to meet him. And there's no moment where we're closer to him than right like in this position that you're looking at in sujood, right? And it, it's even said that when you sit back up from the sujood, you're back on your heels and you can run your fingers up from your knees, just up like this, you're like, I don't know why it did that. Oops, da, da, da. you're like pulling your sujood back into when you're standing and your verticality. It's very important, your sujood. So as you all know, and this is my favorite verse in the entire Quran, Allah says, wasjud waktariba. Bow down, do this, make sej sejda and draw near. So what he's saying is, the more down you are, the nearer you are. Did you know that your head is the most noble part of your body? And if you put it all the way down on the ground, all the way down on the ground, that is what you should do when you come before your creator. Now, do you think it's important to pay attention when you're praying or should you be thinking of lots of other different things? What do you think? You need to pay, you need to pay attention, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, when you start to pray, it's good yeah. if you do two, two rakats, you know, and ask Allah, you know, to, uh, and, and if you do that with no distractions, you're forgiven for your past sins. And every prayer you do, you can consider it to be a goodbye, a farewell prayer. Like you're, you're saying goodbye to how you used to be. And now you're going to travel to meet God fresh. You're saying goodbye to the old person. You know that little boy we talked about who was 10 years old, Ali bin Abi Talib? You won't believe this, children. But when he was about to pray, he started trembling like this. And he turned pale. And everyone said, what's happening to you? He said, oh, when you think of who you were about to stand before, isn't that something? If you think I'm about to stand before Allah, isn't that overwhelming? Wouldn't you be a bit scared too? Yeah. Sure you would, right. So you yeah. see, yeah. So also, you know, when you go to pray, um, after you do your wudu, you know what's a very good idea? You don't want to quickly do your wudu and then run to pray. And you're still a bit thinking about things and of everything going on in your head. So Imam al-Ghazali says, find a place and sit quietly till your body is calm and till your mind is calm. And what you can do is imagine, right, that you're sitting in front of the Kaaba. You see this little girl here sitting, imagining she's sitting in front of the Kaaba. 
So what you can do is um, also you can pretend, you can pretend it's your last prayer and that'll make you be concentrate in it. But while you're there, imagining the Kaaba, but from between this point, right between your, your two um, eyebrows right here, you're imagining you're standing in front of the Kaaba. And so this can calm you down before you start your prayer. You don't want to just run into your prayer a little bit frazzled, right? And by the way, Imam al-Ghazali said, if you're in a mosque, do you ever go in a mosque and hear people chatting and talking? Have you ever had that happen? They met conversation. You can't, in the mosque, you can only talk about spiritual yeah. things. But sometimes people are chatting. And you know what the hadith is? That people who chat in mosques, it's like eating up all their good deeds, just the way cattles are eating grass, right? Now there's something very interesting. Here, Father Hamza has taken the children, they're having ice cream. They've just been to a museum about the human body and they saw hands and veins and hearts and many things. And so the Father Hamza is telling them here, he said, children, you know, if you have a body, there's certain parts of your body that you need to be alive. He's gonna compare this to prayer. Like your heart needs to be there, your lungs need to be there. But if you lost an eye in an accident or lost a hand or a foot, you would, it would, you would still be alive. It would still be, if you've lost certain parts of prayer, it would still be prayer, right? But he said, if, if for example, you, know, you, you lost your eyebrows or your eyelashes, you wouldn't be very beautiful, would you? You know, you, can do that. you look, might look a little ugly with no eyebrows. So, you know, we're asked to do sunnah prayers, the extra prayers like the prophet did, peace and blessings be upon him. Those are the things that make the prayer complete and beautiful, you know? So wouldn't you want to, to, to do your prayers as, be as beautiful prayers and as complete as possible, right? You wouldn't want to reduce your prayers to a minimum, would you? So here, here is Father Hamza talking to them and the children say, no, 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 we want, to, we want to have beautiful prayers, right? And then he said, you know, besides learning to pray, uh, here are two children, they're standing to pray in front of the Qibla and they know that they have to lift their hands and bring them down to their here and down to their sides. And that you have to learn how to do that. And look, they're facing the Qibla when they pray and, the, and Imam al-Ghazali recommends that when you're standing to pray, let your eyes, your gaze, not go beyond the edge of your prayer rug. Don't start looking around. If you're sitting down to prayer, would it be giving full attention to God if you started looking around or yawning or scratching or looking at other people? Would you do that if you were in front of your grandmother or in front of, no, exactly, you're right, you wouldn't do no. that. So why would you do that in front of God? Nope. That would be terrible, right? And also, you have to make a, 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 an intention. You say, a niya, that you're intending to pray. And you want to keep this, remember, we're trying to be present to God. We're not have, we don't want our minds to wander away. When we say the takbir, Allahu Akbar, and when we make the niya, we try to keep ourselves in front of Allah without thinking of other things. And that's very, very hard to do, right? But you want, when you do your prayer, you say, I intend to pray, pray the Fajr prayer. You want that uh, intention to come from your heart. Put your hand on your heart and feel your intention. I intend to do this, right? And then, you know, when you do the takbir, you know, put your hands up like this. Try to, try to, stay completely present to Allah, right? And you do everything slowly. You're not trying to rush every, not trying to rush through, all right? So now, um, and you have, you, sometimes you've seen people, they do a, a supplication and then they do their hands over their face like that. Imam al-Ghazali says the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. He did that too. And so remember, you're not going to do any bad manners, no yawning, no um, looking around at other people. You want to be completely respecting Allah, just like you expect respect other people. Now, 
and this is the bowing. You all know about that. Uh, I'm not going to go through uh, Ghazali telling you exactly how to bow and where to put your hands and what you do, because you know this from your parents, but we're going to talk today about the things you're supposed to be doing inside, like not the outer side of wudu, but the inner. So we're going to be working on that today. All right. So one day the children decide they're going to go and try to find Hajj Abdullah in his little village. And they went all the way to this little village and they found a little poor house and they knocked on the door and his wife opened and she said, oh, you're the lovely children. I've been hearing about you. I just want to tell you that he's in the mosque praying. Won't you come in and have some lemonade? And the children said, no, we'll go ahead. But they looked and they noticed the house was very empty. They were very poor, but it was full of light and humility and beauty. And then they went, they went to the mosque and they talked to, they went over to see Hajj Abdullah in the mosque. And he said, you know, it's important that you have to learn to be uh, the inner parts of your practice of your prayer, you know? I mean, and then he said, you've been doing the wudu with thinking all of those great thoughts now, haven't you? Would you like to go back to wudu where you're just doing it without thinking or without think? Well, that would just be doing the outer thing. You don't want to do that. So now you're going to learn about how to pray in an inward way. And um, you have to know that the other pillars we do, when you fast, it's difficult on your body. When you make the hajj, it's difficult on your body. When you do zakat, maybe it's difficult on you. But if during those three things, you're thinking of other things and you're not concentrated on Allah, there's still a lot of good that's going to come from zakat and from fasting. But do you think if you do a prayer and you're thinking about something else the whole time, going to the cinema, toys, any, do you think that your prayer will be that good if you let all of that go? What do you think? No. No, it, thank you for saying no. Yeah. No. Exactly. No. No. Because Ghazali said, what is no. the prayer? Never. You, Never. Exactly. Yeah. If you're just making motions and moving your lips and saying words, but you're not thinking about what you're saying. No. You don't understand it, right? So we need to, now, if you were, if you were with one of your friends, your little schoolmates, would you fiddle around and look around in different directions and pay no attention to them? Wouldn't that be rude to them? So you want to try to be present when you're praying with Allah. You want to, because you're having an intimate conversation with him, right? You're having a, a conversation with your Lord, right? So, oops, I keep doing this. A second. Now, uh, <clears throat> the children go to visit Hajj Abdullah under the magic tree in the secret garden, all right? And he t tells them, you know, children, we, it's, they're different, invisible, some, you know, they're invisible feelings that make a great difference. If you're calm, that's one thing. If you're upset, that's another feeling. That's not very nice. But you need, there's six states of being you need to have inside of you when you're praying. You need to have presence in your heart. You need to have understanding, veneration. You need to have hope. You have to have um, modesty, um, some shame. And you want to uncover these wonderful qualities that are already part of your own golden heart, right? So, Hajj Abdullah said, he said, you have to notice sometimes you're thinking about worldly matters. You're, you're supposed to be praying, but you're thinking about everything else. And everybody does it. And it's very hard to stop. So um, you have to like, um, if there are things that you're looking at in the room, you ought to remove them. For example, if you're trying to pray and you keep looking at all the patterns in the carpet that you're praying on, wouldn't it be better to pray on a plain blanket? If you're, if you're in a room with pictures all over it and you're looking at the pictures and thinking of, you could, get, you could move those. You could move your prayer rug. You could move to a different place with a plain wall. But those are things that you can change. But the real problem is inside of you, all the thoughts that come up. Now, um, there's another issue. Besides being present in your prayer, in your standing, bowing, sujood, you need to understand the meaning of what you're saying. I mean, 
is it worth just saying a lot of words and you don't know what they mean? No, because, and you can understand what you're saying no matter what age you are. At the different, different levels of age, there's a way to understand everything. And also we need to feel small. We need to feel awe and respect for Allah. We can't just be feeling nothing like we're standing in front of our Lord and then just, just our minds are all over the place. No, we have to honor Allah, we have to be present, and we have to ha have that with understanding. And then awe, we have to feel awe. You know, sometimes you're with somebody very important or older, and maybe a grandparent, and you, you're a little anxious, you might disappoint them. You know, that you wanna feel that with Allah, but you also wanna have hope, you know? I mean, this isn't just like a king or a queen, you know, who can't really give you anything you need. Allah can give you anything you need and you can have good hopes in what he can do with you. So um, we know that Allah loves us so much, right? We know that, right? And we, we feel really ashamed when we do things that are not kind or are wrong. Like maybe you kids, maybe you don't share. Maybe there's some little children you don't, let join in. Maybe you have a younger sister or brother and you won't let him play with your group. Oh, that's a terrible thing to do. So you feel bad about it, don't you? You know, and so we have to feel bad sometime. It's important, you know? Now, yeah. Well, it happened to me on my room because we kind of get in a fight. <laughs> it did? Yeah, sometimes I get in a fight because <laughs> I really just hang something away from me. Yeah, exactly. But you feel bad about fighting, don't you? It doesn't feel good, does it? Yeah, it feels like um, killing. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. And uh, Imam al-Ghazali says, if you want, let's say, to pray in a beautiful way, if, if something really matters to you, don't you find a way to make it happen? Let's say you want to get a toy and you beg your mother so long, she finally gives in and gets it. I mean, if you really want to get a beautiful prayer and now you know how important prayer is, you, 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 you're going to find a way to do it, right? Because, I mean, do you think Allah looks at what we do or he looks at our hearts? Where do you think Allah is looking? Or pray. He's looking at our hearts. He cares or, how we at are. At our hearts. In our hearts. That's right. In our hearts, right? And so. Everywhere. Um, now, so here, he, here is what he wants you to do. All right, let me just do the next picture here. This is Haj Abdullah talking to the kids in the garden. It's getting late. They probably should go home to their parents, don't you think? But he's telling them some important things. So now, okay, do you all know uh, what takbir is? You put your hands up and say Allahu Akbar before you pray. Do you all know that? Have you ever done that? Said Allahu Akbar like that, the takbir? Okay, now what you have to do before you do this next time is the following. First, remind yourself, think to yourself, I'm about to stand before God, right? Prayer will lead me to the next world, right? And as I'm saying Allahu Akbar, I'm gonna try to empty my heart and think what the words Allahu Akbar mean. It's like God is greater than anything. Isn't that right, kids? God is greater than anything, anything we can think about. So when we're doing that, when we're saying that, God is greater than anything, we can feel a little bit of fear, you know, that we might not do the right, right thing. We can, we, we, we have reverence for Allah, right? And then, just a minute. And then, just so you know, this is the grandfather and grandmother. They're up in the tree house with the children having tea and cakes. And uh, the grandfather is asking them how they're doing with their inner prayers, right? And he says, you know, anyone can see outer movements. If I do this, if I do this, anyone can see that, right? But only God can see what's inside of my heart. Isn't that right? So it's important that we get the state of our hearts right for prayer. Prayer can't just be moving lips and up and down movements. It's it's who we are inside while we're praying, right? And so the grandfather says, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you ways you can be more present before you even start to pray, before you even start to pray. And it, it will help get you going in the right direction. Okay, 
before you pray, what can help you is first you're making your wudu. Isn't that right? You do your wudu. And when you're doing that, you're going over things you wish you hadn't done and you hope to do. You're feeling humbled. You're asking for guidance. And then you dress properly, don't you? Because you have respect. You don't just go and pray in bathing suits or horrible clothes. Right. You That's dress super. with respect, you see? Because you're, you're standing before Allah. And then you hear the Adan. And you know when the Adan is going, you're all supposed to repeat it when he says, Allahu Akbar, repeat along with the, with the Adan and try to feel joy and happiness when you're listening to it, right? I can't hear your screen. You can't hear me? Can everyone else hear? I can't see your screen. I hear you. I can see your screen. I can't hear you. I can see your screen. Well, I, I don't I know. I can see your screen too. Yeah, we I can. Me too. Yeah. Me so too. anyway, this when you when you well, you can start um start getting ready for prayer uh, and for going to meet God by your wudu and by the way you dress. And then when then when you go and stand in front of the qibla, right? Do you know what the qibla is? Who can say? I don't know. Yes. Is that like the Kaaba? Yes. yes, the direction of the Kaaba, right. So, uh, so imagine um, you're standing, li listen to this carefully, everyone. You're standing in the direction of prayer, all right? Your face is in that right direction, right? Your heart should be also in the same direction, facing it, right? If you start looking around, looking out the window, the heart moves with you, right? You, you, you don't, you, your mind and your heart will turn with you. So you have to, uh, there's a hadith that says, Ghazali said, let the face of your heart be with the face of your body. And so be straightforward. Okay, then you stand up straight, everyone. Okay, everyone stand up straight, all right? And then you bow your head. Now, the reason you're bowing your head, it's as I said, it's the highest part of your body, right? And if you lower it, it's like you're humbling yourself before Allah. You're not full of crap. You're, you're bringing yourself down before God, right? You know, and you can imagine standing before Allah at the end of your life, right? Or in standing in front of your grandparents or a respected elder, you know, and you, you want to be at your very, very best. And then, you know, we want to, to calm our minds as we enter into prayer, right? And we have to look at our thoughts and see what kind of thoughts are tempting us to think about them. And we have to keep turning away and turning back and being present, right? And remember, feel your intention in your heart. And then your intention can be this, all right? This can be your intention. I want to be near to God and pray as correctly as I can. I am aware what a grace it is that he allows me to speak with him, even with my misdoings and mistakes. You know, children, imagine we can all learn to be present with God in this amazing, uh, unimaginable, wondrous conversation we are able to have with him. You know, and this is available in our prayers. And you know, if you try to do it, it'll work. So now, when you say your takbir, Allahu Akbar, right at that moment, be like you're standing in front of a king or, and be present to that because your mind is gonna wander very quickly. And you try to hold on to that, hold on to the tech. And, and one day you'll hold it a second longer and a second longer till it goes through your whole prayer and it's with you all the time. But start out, if you can just hold being present without thinking about other things during the takbir. Can you all try to do that? Just, just thinking about Allah, not letting your mind wander away because the mind is always wandering. And then when you bring down your hands, you're doing this, push everything away, push everything else behind you. Just try to do that. All right, now we have the Fatiha. All right, you see the Fatiha here? No, you skip two pages. Yes. Like well, the, I did. Oh, yeah, the other one. You're stay, stay still, and yes. the other one. 
There you well, that was the one you were talking about. Uh, okay, when we're doing the Fatiha, all right, when we start the Fatiha, you know, you hear people say, A'udhu Billahi, I seek refuge from the accursed shaitan, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajim. You, you hear that being said, that's what you begin with, right? And then this is interesting, Ghazali tells a story. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and there was a beast that came, a huge beast with dragon's teeth. And the little boy said, I seek protection from the beast in a safe fortress. Will that save him standing there saying that? No, he better run, right? So what he needs to do is change places. So it's the same with you. Nothing will save you from shaitan except to change places, to stop doing things that are no good anymore, you know? And the fortress that you can go into is la ilaha illallah. It's the shahada. And shaitan is always trying to make us think of other things and not be present while we're saying the fatiha. But so when you say a'udhu billah, don't just move your tongues. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan. Don't just do that. Think, I am getting away. I am not going to let him take away my good thoughts. All right? And then when you say bismillah, you all say bismillah, don't you? The name of Allah, the yes. source of all being. Then we say ar rahman yeah. I, I, I always, I always say uh, bismillah anytime I eat. Oh, fantastic. Always, when you begin anything, when you start a trip, when you walk out the door, it's very good to say bismillah. But now listen to this. You know, when you say ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, don't just say it. In your minds, go to a new place. While you're saying it, think. Think he's, Allah is kind to you. He's merciful. He gives, this gives you hope. And then you say, Maliki Yomadin, the king of the final day. Now, when you say that, you should be a little afraid, right? That you might do something wrong. So now you've gone from being, thinking, oh, he's so merciful, oh, he's so kind to, uh-oh, I better be good. He's the king of the final day, right? So that's veneration and fear. And then when we say, you alone do we worship, iyaka nabudu, right? You know, when you say that, you alone do we worship, mm -hmm. just notice, we are in trouble and we are weak and on, we can only turn to him. Don't just say the words, really feel, oh my goodness, only you, only you can I turn to when I'm in trouble, only you, right? And then when you say, you alone, we ask for help, be humble. You know, you need his help. Where else are you gonna get help? When you say that, really say it, I need your help, right? And then you say, guide us on the straight path. Beg him. Say in your, don't just say, guide me on the straight path. Just say, oh, I want to come near you. I don't want a crooked path. There, there are two paths. There's a crooked path and a straight path. If you had the two paths before you, which are you going to want to take, everybody? The straight. straight you don't want the straight. Yeah, you straight don't want the path. Yeah. Okay. I mean, crooked, crooked. A crooked one, right? Imagine that. Straight and clean, good path. And you know, if you a lot, Ghazali, Imam Al Ghazali says this to kids: if you say the Fatiha, like we've just talked about, not just say it fast, but slowly think about those things, think about Allah, think about what you're asking, begging. If you do it, Imam Al Ghazali says, if you recite a Fatiha in this way, you will be one of the people. Allah mentions among the servants who praise him. He'll get mentioned by Allah. He'll mention you. Can you imagine being mentioned by, and say it slowly, right? How else are you gonna be present to Allah if you're rushing through, right? And think of what you say, be in awe. I mean, you know, you, and you also, you also wanna, you also wanna be still. You don't, you wanna be moving, don't wanna be moving around. One of the essentials is you wanna be, um, humble, present in your heart. So you need to think about the positions you're in, all right? Okay, say you're standing straight. Let's think about our positions. We've now talked about the different things we say in the Fatah, and we've thought about how we have to be when there are different modes of being as we're saying things, right? 
So now we're standing straight, okay? <clears throat> Listen to this. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, God faces the one offering the prayer as long as he does not turn away. So face Allah, right? Keep your head and eyes from turning and keep your inner self from turning, right? Stay facing Allah. Because if you turn away, he's turned too, right? He's turned away from you, right? Pretend like you're, you're would you be talking to a friend of yours, any of your friends, and then turn away from them while you're talking to them? Would you do that? No, that would be rude. So uh, like, you no. should, yeah, you don't want to do it. No, nope. no, hate no. to do that to my friends. No. So you want to just you see these kids oh, with I, the birds oh. on their head? You see the children here? Can you be so still that a bird could land on your head and you're just standing there? You're still and you're present to Allah and you're looking straight ahead, right? There's a story about a man that the birds didn't just land on his head. Even when he was down in Sujud, they landed on him too. You know, and then when you say, Allah, now remember, when you change positions, when you change prayer positions, each time you say Allahu Akbar, or the Imam says Allahu Akbar. Now, when you say it, don't just say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, right? Think of his greatness, you know, and that you're asking him for mercy. He is the most great. Think that. Don't just say it. And then when you bow, you know, when you bow down, um, in your mind, as you bow over, right? As you bow over, right? Feel low. Don't feel like this. Feel you're humbling yourself. You're bowing. You're being reverent to God. Um, and then, then you know, um, when you say, say God, here's the one who praises him. Sami Allahu Hamida. You know, that means if God hears the one who praises him, right? That means he answers the one who thanks him. You know, you have to know that when you're saying these things, Allah is present. You're standing in his presence, right? And then when you rise up from the bow, they're, they're still standing with birds, all right? When you rise up from the bow, you say, my Lord, all praise is yours, right? And listen to this. All right, just as you're rising up from the... And you're, and you're saying this prayer, my Lord, all praise is yours. Don't just say that. Think, praise fills all that is in the heavens and the earth. Imagine when you're saying that, imagine that you're in a place with light, with praise, filling all the heavens and the earth. Imagine you're in your room where you're praying and suddenly you're in a place where light goes out forever and ever, right? And then when you are in sujood, when you go down and do sujood, remember, feel the highest way you can be before God. That's your noblest part. Your face is in the lowest place, like it's in dust, you know? I should have, I've, I've jumped ahead here. So I'm just going to continue saying what I was saying, all right? But when you put, by the way, do you know what Imam al-Ghazali said? If you could possibly pray in the real earth, not on a prayer rug, in a house, on a floor, of course, we need to pray that way. But he said, if you went out and prayed outdoors and put your head in the dust, right? He said, this would remind us that we've come from the earth and we're going back to the earth. And we put our lower self in the lowest place because we can feel the dust he said it's like it's like we're taking the root of the tree and putting it down the the branches of the ground and putting them back into the earth you know and so we want to feel that we are created and we're returning to allah and then you know we say sapana rabbi alala glorified my lord on most high we say that several times and if you're saying that you know you should, you know, glorifying Allah, subhanAllah. You should be in the state of being, not saying subhanAllah, subhanAllah. You should say, oh, imagine I'm sitting here glorifying Allah. So you have to feel these things inside of you. you and you know what is going to happen when you feel humble and low and put your head on the forehead, on the ground? 
you will feel relief. And I bet some of you have noticed that, that you've, you've felt relief before. And Allah loves our weakness in our humility. When, and when we say we're sorry. And then you say, you can also say Allahu Akbar. I, I, don't, I think I've lost where I'm going with all of these pictures, but that doesn't matter. They're very beautiful. Oh no, I'm going back, it's too soon. Okay, so also when you say Allahu Akbar, you don't forget you're in direct conversation with Allah and you have to ask him for your special needs, you know, and you ask him for, for forgiveness before you do your second sujood. And then when you're sitting up like this, you know, you finished bowing, you're sitting up like this and you think to yourself, everything belongs to God, including the prayers offered in even who I am. And then, right, remember you have to give your greetings to the right and the left. So the, the, the prophets, you have to make the prophet peace and blessings be upon him present in your own heart and greet him directly from yourself. This is not just saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, just saying it, you're actually in direct connection with him. He's there for you, right? And these greetings do reach him, you know? And remember that he returns our, our, the greet, the, our greetings to him. So you're in connection with him when you're doing that. And then also when you're saying the shahada, you know, Imagine taking shelter in the fortress of God, right? And you can say do after your parents and all of the faithful. And then you greet all of the angels and the others who are present. But when you're doing this, I want you to be in a state of real gratitude with your, with your heart, right? And thank Allah for this chance to complete this act of worship. And imagine you're saying goodbye to what might be your last prayer. You never know. And there's a hadith which says, prayer is part of the hereafter. When you enter it, you leave this world. Can you imagine when you're praying, you're actually leaving this world, right? So what you're learning is that you have to be humble and present in your heart, right? In your prayers. Now, then there's such a thing as the Friday prayers, all right? Um. Let me see if there, oh, that, oops, I'm going back. All right. Uh, have any of you ever been to the mosque for Friday, Friday prayer prayers? Have you? Have I someone? Have. have you? Yes. Good. I always have, but not now. Me too. What now? I have. I do go back. I always go to the mosque. That's wonderful you get, you get to go. You know that um, you know that you know how they che choose the imam for the mosque. He's somebody who everyone likes, not somebody they don't like, and who is the smartest one or the best person who recites. And if the imam makes a mistake when he's leading you in prayer, it doesn't matter. Your prayers are still perfect. You know the first imam was the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and then Abu Bakr and Omar, and. The prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him. Your imams are, are your messengers before God. And then the man who does the call to prayer, the muazzin, if, if he does it for seven years, he's promised heaven. And if he calls the prayer for 40 years, he enters paradise with actually no questions, no questioning. And the imam is responsible for making everybody pray on time. Once the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who was an imam, was late and somebody else took, became the imam instead. You don't want to be late. And you want your, and the imam makes sure the rows are straight. You see these children? They're sitting in straight rows and the gaps are closed. And then there's a second adan. It's called the akama or the, the call for readiness. All right. And they call Friday the Lord of the days. Um, the Lord of the days. Uh, Gabriel came to uh, Gabriel came to the prophet with a white mirror in his hand, and and mentioning that these on Friday these are the best hours that the day, the hours on Friday, and uh, conditions many things can take place. But when you have when you have the Friday prayer, uh, you need to have it 
at noon, of course, and 40 people have to come. And there are two sermons. And the second sermon, the Friday sermon, should be clear, but not long. But now you need to know there are 10 manners, 10 manners for, for, for going to the Friday prayer, OK? This is what we want to do, children. On Thursday, you start preparing, right? It gives you special graces. You make your intention on Thursday, and you ask Allah's forgiveness, right? It's better than waking up on Friday morning and saying, hey, what day is it? Thursday, you're already thinking, tomorrow is Friday, and I'm going to get to pray with the congregation. And then you take a bath on Friday morning, do your nails and teeth and everything clean, and wear clothes that don't stand out, white is good. And you know why? You set out early to the mosque. Because if you get there early, you can do a retreat. Here is Hajj Abdullah. He's gotten to the mosque early. He's doing a little private retreat. If you get there early, you can sit quietly before all the people come and ask God's forgiveness. And there's a hadith. When it's, when it's Friday, the angels sit by the door recording the first ones to come in. You see the angels' wings here? They're interested to see who comes in first. It says, when it is Friday, the angels sit by the door of the mosques, and in their hands are pages of silver and pens of gold with which they record the first as the first in their order of entering the mosque. And al-Bukhari and Muslims said, uh, the angels say, O oh God, if poverty has delayed him, enrich him. If illness, cure him. If some work, relieve him. Um, re relieve him of it for the sake of your worship. And if it's some vain distraction, turn his heart back to your obedience. So angels are on either side of the door, everybody, recording who's getting there and what time they come, right? And of course, when you, when you go in, see the angels right here recording? Mm. When you go inside, you're not supposed to start climbing over people's backs to get up to the front row, right? And you don't walk in front of people who are praying. You don't ever do that, right? And another reason to, to arrive early is to try to get a seat in the front so that you can hear better. But listen to this. If you're so generous and you want other people to be on the front row, then you could go and sit in the back. You have to look at your intentions. And then you end you, you say you're doing your own prayers. You're just doing some special prayers. And the ma'am comes in. The second he comes in, you stop your own prayers right in the middle. And if you're talking to someone, you stop talking. And if someone is talking down the row, just gesture to them. Just gesture. You don't say anything. Like, no prayers. All right? Next, you do your prayer correctly. These are the 10 things you've got to do. And then 10, the last thing, listen to this. If you... Can, if you would like to stay in the mosque until Asr or even Maghrib on a special retreat, it is a wonderful thing to do on Fridays. But if you do it just to impress people so they think, oh, he's really great. He stayed after, you know, he's doing a retreat. Then you better not do it. You should think about your own weaknesses. So remember, when you're in the mosque, you only do spiritual talking. And Friday is a very special day to do good deeds and special services. Of course, every day is a good day to do it, but it's especially good on Friday because there's something during the day of Friday called the noble hour. And this noble hour is hidden. But if you are thinking about Allah and the noble hour comes and you ask him something, oh, guide me, help me, he will answer you and give you what you're asking for or something better that he knows of. So that's what the noble hour is. So we end, end by saying that when you go to visit a mosque, the first thing you do when you go in is do two rakas, right? You do two bowings, right? Does anyone know what happens if you're saying one of your prayers and you forget where you are? You don't know whether you st stood up once or twice. This can happen, you know? You're, you, you're praying and all of a sudden you think, oh my goodness, I just, I just forgot where I was. What you do at the end of your prayer, right? is the end of your prayer is just before you, you do your final um, greetings of the angels, you just go, you bow down twice. It's called Sujuda Sehwad. You just do that and then you yeah, greet. Yeah, I do them. that if I ever make a mistake in Salah. That's right. And you know what My happened? brother just taught me how to do that. I am so glad that you know how to do 
I only learned about it when I was like 40 years old. And what happened was I was in Mecca at the Kaaba during Ramadan, millions of people, and the man was leading the prayer next to the Kaaba. And all of a sudden, he started doing the Sujuda Sahwa. And I didn't know what he was doing. He was so humble that he forgot where he was and he wasn't embarrassed. He didn't hide it. He actually was there so close to Allah that he did the Sujuda Sahwa, meaning I forgot where I was during my prayer, right? Now, um, we're going to end here and answer some questions, but just let you, uh, let, to let you know that there are many kinds of prayers, not just the re regular prayers. Uh, they're the nawafil, the sunnah, the recommended, the gift, voluntary, istihara, glorification, and the prayers of pressing needs, and uh, other, other group prayers, too. So these are all things you can learn about. But what, what Imam al-Ghazali says when he ends the book of prayer is, to, the thing he wants you to do, even if you do something, one little thing, just do it regularly. Say you decide that every time you do takbir, you're going to remember you're standing in front of Allah and you're going to try to be present and you're not going to lose your attention. If you just do that every time you pray regularly, you're going to get somewhere. So that is a, a very quickly done, the book of prayer. And oh, we're not going to do the curriculum. They're just some nice, nice pictures of kids here. There's a couple that I really... Can we, can yeah. we color um, while listening? Yes. While you're listening, I'd love it if you colored while we're listening. Yeah. Look at this lovely little boy from Indonesia. Isn't he beautiful? And this little girl is being present. Look at that. She is being very careful to not let her thoughts get carried away. And this one's giving gifts. Look at her. These little wonderful children. I have a question. How many pictures are these? Hmm? How many what? Just, I've, I've, pictures of kids there are lots of pictures of kids this is my favorite one isn't she lovely she's doing duet isn't she so I'm going to end the screen here stop share stop share I want to show you my drawing of me. I, I see your drawing hold it up let me see it where is it I Basically think it's wonderful. the scratching thing that you do. Can I see it? Could you hold it up? Can someone help her hold up her drawing? Wow, that is beautiful. Where is it? Thank you. Right here. There. I can't I see. I can't see because it's um, upside down. Yeah. Let, me, let me see. Maybe I'll move across. Still, it's really beautiful. It looks like, is that, is that um, from a Golden me. Gate Bridge? Or is, that is, that is, is it the Golden Gate Bridge? Zahra, right? Zahra, Rahmatullah. That is beautiful. Look at that. Hey, that's my name. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I'm seeing a drawing that's being held up here. It looks really good. Wait, I didn't have a drawing. You don't? Well, then whose drawing is it? Let me look and see everybody who's here. I think there are two Zahras. I'm one of them. Well, why is it I'm not seeing the drawing? Okay. Oh, children. she stopped holding it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she stopped. Okay, can you hold it up one more time? There's two Zahras, actually. All right. Who's uh, showing the drawing? I'll, I'll highlight it's them. It's Zahra oh, Rahmatullah. Okay. And she has the drawing. She's yeah. holding it up, right? How funny is that? Okay. There it is. I can see it. Okay. Wow, oh, isn't that that's beautiful. Cool. That's, that's is that the Golden cool. Great Bridge? Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's the London Bridge. It's the London Bridge. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I like your drawing. It's wonderful. Do you like to draw? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I'd love for you all to do as your homework this week is um, think of anything we said today, any of the stories any of the stories we told and do a drawing of an idea that you like the best that meant something to you. Will everybody do a drawing and show it to me next week? Will you Can do that? We, yes. Can we draw, Can we draw right? about like a design on a carpet yes, or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a, very, a thing you can do. 
if you pray and your prayer rug is driving you crazy because you look at all the patterns, maybe you can get a, a paper bag and draw your own prayer rug, cut it out out of paper and make it simple and make it something that wouldn't distract you. Could you do that? You make yes. More? Yeah. Yes. But how are we going to do that in yeah. Mars? No, you just do it at home. Just get a paper bag and cut it up and make it into. Can I do one the after prayer or before prayer or in the middle? You can do whatever you want. I'm talking about after prayer, or before prayer, or in the middle. Well, you're not going to be drawing in the middle of a prayer. It should be before or after, okay? But I think what I want you all, maybe here's what I want you all to do. I think what you probably should take away from today, along with your parents, is when you do your prayer, all right, just like when you do your wudu, really think about what you're doing. Don't just say the words and move. Really imagine if you're saying, Edina uh, Serata, you know, show us the clear way. Really in your heart feel, Yani, oh Allah, guide me, show me the correct way. If you're saying subhanAllah, really feel awesome. And you know what you're going to discover in your, in your place where you pray? It'll be, you'll be slowed down. You'll be thinking about it. You'll be in a room full of light. You'll see light going on forever. So will everybody tell me next week, do one prayer and tell, tell me how it went? Will everybody do that? I already did a prayer today. Oh, sorry. I know what the hell I did. Um, I prayed um from Fajr to um, Morib and it's, it's not a shot time yet. Oh, yeah. What time is it where you are? See, for me, it's five after 10, so I have to go to bed. I'm five minutes late for bed. What time do you go to bed? For me, it's seven or six. Wait, For me, time? it's seven or Nine. like kind of eight or seven. For me, it's nine o'clock. For me, it's nine o'clock. Bedtime is at nine o'clock. Okay, will you, will you all wish me a very good night and tell me to sleep well? Tell me. What city are you in? Yes. Enjoy your day. What city are you in? What did you say? What city are you in? In a town called Louisville, Kentucky. It's where Muhammad Ali Clay lived and died, and also where Kentucky Fried Chicken started. <laughs> I've been to your house, I think. Kentucky Fried Chicken? Yeah. Oh, chicken. I even met Colonel Sanders' sister. You know, he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> the time for me is gonna go the to time for the time I for remember I think I went to your next week I'm gonna tell an amazing story. Bye. 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 Bye.